So the third and final major subsystem for our robot is a differential turret, which we didn't quite finish because I was a little bit too ambitious and I might have bit off a little more than I could chew. But the, the concept is there, the design is cool, so I'll talk about it anyway. Basically, uh, so the goal here is after the ball gets funneled up here with this first funnel and this little feed shaft thingy, it hits the main turret intake. And uh, essentially how this works is if you look at where the, the center of this rot big rotating thing at the, the, at the top is, um, that's going to meet up with here, which is the, uh, the hypothetical center. If this was to be, if, if you look down at the top and that was like a full shape, then so all the balls are, they'll end up right here. And no matter which way the turret faces, um, it's, it'll get fed into this tube and eventually get fired out the top. And the way we adjust for distance and, uh, yeah, the way we adjust for distance and height is by modulating the speed of the turret, like the flywheel. And the way we adjust for angle is with this really cool mechanism called a differential. So basically a differential takes in, in like a robotics standpoint, uh, it takes two motor inputs which can be a varying in their speed. And it gets one output that uh, for like some main component and a secondary output, uh, which is basically takes the difference between speeds of the two inputs. It's, that is not a good explanation. But if I jump over to this sub assembly over here, um, this might be a little bit easier to understand, or in fact, this might be even better. So basically we've got this one big bevel gear here at the bottom and ignore the spur gear at the side because that's just how we're powering it and it's copied up onto the top and we've got two small bevel gears over here so you can imagine if we were to spin the two uh, the, the two large bevel gears in opposite directions then these two small ones would spin in place and if we were to say uh, hold the bottom one in place while we spin the top one then these ones would travel around and I can demonstrate that right now if I were to fix that and now move this. You have no idea this took me so long to get all the mates constrained correctly but basically uh, it's still a little bit glitchy. Uh, so these move around um, while the top one rotates and since oh yeah so that's not allowing it because I should unfix that. So the other thing I can demonstrate is if we were to rotate the top and bottom at the same speed but in opposite directions then it keeps these two in place so now moving on from there we've essentially got two motor inputs one on the top one on the bottom and those are power those are just these two small spur gears um, and then we get two outputs one is the central flywheel spinning around and the other is the angle of the flywheel so you might notice that or you might be thinking that uh, well hold on one of the bevel gears is turning in one direction, and the other one's turning in the other direction. You can't lock them onto the same shaft, and you would be absolutely correct. If we were to do that, it would lock up, you couldn't move anywhere, the whole mechanism would be bad. But the way we get around that is we have it only locked on one side, so we're doing that with a sonic hub right here. So basically it screws onto the bevel gear, I should hide that. So it screws onto these uh, four holes on the bevel gear. On this side, I didn't add the screws because that's a lot of work, and I didn't do it. Okay, moving on. So as this, this gets spun around, then that locks onto the central shaft and moves the flywheel, which is again attached with some sonic hubs. Um, the thing keeping these on track, <laughs> uh, keeping them locked onto the main bearings is this W wheel right here. So um, ideally we'd use probably like a V wheel, uh, like a V groove bearing, but they didn't really have the right diameter bore and I was getting lazy. So it's a W wheel. And so basically you can see that's just sitting on this here track, which is part of a big 3D printed bevel gear. And that's gonna keep us um, on the correct pathway. So if I was to kind of move this around, you can see we've got the capability to change directions with the flywheel. And we've also got the capability to change flywheel speeds by modulating the, uh, the difference. In, like if you, if you change, if you've got like one motor running at positive X rotations per minute, the other one running at negative x rotations per minute, so it's running the opposite direction, and you increase x, right? So then you're getting a greater difference in speeds, but it's the same absolute value, then it just means the flywheel spins faster. And if you say turn one a little bit faster or the other one a little bit slower, you start getting a rotation around with the bevel gear, like ar around with one of the main bevel gears, giving you 
a uh, an angle output. And what's really awesome about this, and why I absolutely love the system, uh, even though it's not done, is it lets us have a full 360 may uh, more than 360 degrees of rotation. It can be continuously rotating all the time, it, and it doesn't matter. There's no wires to get tangled because all the motors are external. So that means we could have somebody on our software team because software is cool, and I appreciate software too. I'm not just a CAD person, um, but I just do CAD. Um, right, we have one of those cool people program up something that's tracking the big red circle on the like on the goals, right? So then when we want to shoot, we've already got the thing tracking in place. So all we need to do is drive up on the bronze platform and it's already locked down. We just fire it off and we're good to go for a loop. And this is the main thing that helps us cycle really fast together with the chassis that's modular and able to switch between high speed and high maneuverability and traction. So that way we can have all the advantages of Mechanum moving around the field, picking up the balls, uh, strafing, pick, uh, choosing whatever, avoiding other robots. And when we need to, we flip down the um, the Colsons and we get traction to jump up onto the pl the the podium. That's what it's called, and fire off the the two wiffle balls that we have in storage. Um, but that's basically all that I have about the turret, because like I said, I didn't quite finish. Sorry, I don't know. Lots of stuff going on. Um, yeah, the, the the main issue right now is there's nothing keeping the big bevel gear from flying off the top. Uh, ideally, I'd solve that with either like another track similar to this one he here on the inside, but kind of pointing outwards, and then I could lock that onto the actual frame of the robot, or maybe put something on here like a pillow block with uh, like a face mount that's slightly bent outwards and matches another track. But in any case, that's a problem for future me. Um, for now, I'm happy with this subsystem. And if I jump back to the main assembly, oh, and I should probably. Select all of these. Sorry, I've got one hand on the microphone. Eh. Unhide those. Right. That's basically our robot um, in a nutshell. Yeah, so the, the, the largest issues are the turret's not finished and it's not mounted, but we do have space for the uh, rev hub, battery, um, and everything else. Yeah. Thank you for listening to the end. I don't really have anything else to say, except for uh, follow 4042 non-standard deviation on all the social media. And yeah, okay, I'm, I'm going to stop. Thank, thanks for watching.